What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. You know, a lot of people ask me, what does 23 and 1 mean? And I say to myself, that guy has never, ever, ever seen the inside of a jail or a penitentiary to be asking me that question. But I respond respectfully exactly what it is, okay? 23 and 1 is 23 hours in a cell with one hour out for a shower phone call, whatever the institution gives you for that one hour out, okay? And this is because you are in the hole, the special housing unit, the shoe, the side pocket, as I like to call it, the jail within a jail. That's what I'm talking about, okay? That's when people get 23 and 1. Now, there's people that get in trouble or, you know, Rastafarians that don't believe in cutting their hair. They will sit in the hole their whole bit. And those guys will actually get catered to because they're in there uh, because of their religious beliefs. They'll actually allow them to have commissary, TV, and, you know, they stand up for what they believe in. They'll write the letters, they'll get their families in contact to prison, and it'll work out for them. Now, even with all those amenities, I can guarantee you, I know, those guys go crazy. Okay? Years in segregation. Years doing 23 and 1 will drive you insane. People think that they can sit in a cell by themselves and enjoy their stay in the penitentiary, okay? Nice and safe to their self. Well, I can guarantee you without a doubt in my mind, try doing just a year straight, okay? Without any kind of human contact besides screaming voices from cell to cell and maybe a correctional officer or nurse every now and then. You do not get to, you know, shake hands with no one, play check cards, games, whatever it is. Laugh. You're going to be laughing to yourself. That's how it is. And I can guarantee you within probably, for the most part, within three months, you will be begging to get back into general population. Without a doubt in my mind. Now, the reason why I chose that name is because I've done a lot of time in the side pocket, in the hole. Okay, I've done a lot, and I've seen a lot of things. I'm going to tell you a couple stories before the video is over about what I've seen, and they're actually very wild stories, man. But there's one thing that, you know, I do know. The reason why I chose that is because I hated lockdown 23-1. I hated it. I couldn't stand being on lockdown. I couldn't stand being in the hole. I had to have communication with other people. I just had to have it. I mean, if I didn't have it, I went insane. I would really start acting out. So believe it or not, I can't stand my name on my channel, you know? It brings back horrible memories, but if anybody remembers anything about the penitentiary, it is the whole and how treacherous and boring it is, man. It drives you insane. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you a few stories about the whole, okay? This is another question someone has asked me about. Have I known anyone to escape from jail or prison? Do I know anyone? And I do, okay? Uh, this happened in, I don't remember these guys' names, but um, you can look it up. It was in Chesapeake City Jail. I believe it was like 2006. Uh, this guy escaped from that jail, and it was absolutely unbelievable. I can't believe anyone uh, was able to do it. But he did it, sure enough, and he already had escapes on his record. It's like these guys that have escape charges, they they find a way, man. There are guys that are very, very resourceful about getting out of the penitentiary or jail. You know, usually people that break out, they've broken out more than once. So, anyways, uh, we got caught up, three of us got caught up burning some chess pieces in the jail block to make some uh, tattoo ink, do some plucks. And we all went to the hole. We went to the same block in the hole. And, you know, we were talking about it, laughing about it and stuff like that. And I didn't care. I was going home in a week. So I was going to be going home from the hole. Now, when I left, when they called my name, I'll never forget that time. Waiting for them to call my name. I was just pacing back and forth in that hole, man. Pacing, pacing, pacing. Biting my nails, ready to go get some poontang. You know what I mean? And finally, they called my name, man. I slung everything up. I got out, and I, the dude was like, bro, let me get your whites. Let me get your whites. So I took them all my whites except for the ones I was wearing, okay? And I gave him a Calvin Klein V-neck. When you wear V-necks like that in jail, uh, you know, you're a little fancy. 
Someone might even try to steal it. For real, for real. But if I knew I was going to jail, I always had some nice V-neck white tees that I would layer in before I go to jail. They let me bring all of it in as long as it's white. Now, so I was leaving the uh, hole going home, and I gave the guy my whites. Okay, I get home, and, you know, I, I wish him the best of luck. He was facing, he already had like 20 years, and he was facing another bank robbery, so he was coming home no time soon. And I went home, and it was about like three weeks later. I start cooking some eggs in the morning, turn on the TV, and boom, he escaped, man. It was on the news. I said, oh, my God. You know, I scream, oh my god, I know him. He escaped from the jail. Yeah, how did he do that? You know what I mean? And now that I know how he did it, it's absolutely insane. He escaped from this outdoor basketball court that's chained up. And they never take us outside. So this was a rare occasion. He knew that if he got out there, he was going to have to do it. And that whole week, they are taking him outside in this uh, basketball court that was surrounded by barbed wire and the f and the roofs and everything. It's crazy. How he got out, I really still don't understand even after they explained it. But he got out and they caught him in Richmond about, you know, three or four days later. It turns out the person that dropped him off in Richmond called the police. How are you going to take the man to Richmond and then call the police? I guarantee it was probably a girl. You know, he showed up at the baby mom. Look, I need you to take me here now. And she was terrified, took him to Richmond. And as soon as he got out of the car, beep, 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 I just dropped off my ex in Richmond. You need to come get him now. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I don't know, man. It might have been different. But that's how he got caught. And he was on the TV. And he was wearing my V-neck. That's right. He was. So that was a pretty crazy story about a guy who escaped. I never thought it would be possible to escape from that jail. That thing's like Fort Knox. Absolutely unbelievable. Now another time, I remember I was laying in the hole. I just got some good news. I was in the hole and I found out that my children were born. My twins, my firstborns, borns, my twins, they were born. Uh, you know, the whole day before I was talking to her on the phone. She was in the hospital and, you know, they're ready to pop out any second. And uh, the next day I call her and she goes, you're a daddy, you know what I mean? And I'm all happy, man. You know, that's the best feeling to feel when you're in the hole, even though you're in a crappy uh, place. But that brings a lot of joy to your heart. It makes doing time in the hole a lot easier. So I'm all happy, man. I get back there like, lock down, lock down, your hour's over. I'm like, all right, all right, man. I get up in the cell. I'm antsy. I just feel like I need to go home, man. And I'm just happy. And then all of a sudden, I hear this guy start snapping, man. I mean, he just starts snapping, and you know the guards are about to do something because he's really banging, he's shaking the bars really hard. It's making a lot of noise, and then the cops come in, and he starts cussing at them and stuff like that. And then they want to transfer him. I think they were going to put him into a padded room or something, you know. I don't know because we're in a hole. They're, where else are you going to put him? The padded room, probably in a blue paper suit. But uh, this guy... He was snapping, and they came to get him out, and he wouldn't leave. He wouldn't step out the cell. He was just staying in the bed, I'm guessing, you know what I mean? He wasn't get out the cell. And they said, if you don't get out the cell, we're going to tase you. And it took about 30 minutes for them straight up saying, we're going to tase you if you don't get out. We're going to tase you if you don't get out. We're going to tase you if you don't get out. And then all of a sudden, yeah, I hear that, man. I'm like, oh, there you got he got tased. He got tased, everybody. He got tased. Yeah, we heard it. We heard it. <laughs> oh, man. And then you're like, God, man, he is having a bad day. And then I'm like, I'm a dad. I'm a dad. This, you know, I, it was, didn't even phase me. But it was, it was like entertainment. You know, it's sad to say, but I'm in a hole hearing someone get tased. That's killing time, my friend. It is. It's, it's crazy to look back at these things. And you know, one time I was in the hole and I came out to go use the phone. So I walk up to the phones and I realize the cell that's right by the phone, there's a guy walking in there butterball naked. You know what I mean? Come on, man. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? I'm young at this time. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I, I kind of glanced and was like, you know, just got on the phone, put my back towards him. But then I started thinking, maybe this guy's nuts. He might start throwing piss on me or something you know what I mean so I started freaking out about that a little bit but I had to use the phone so I just went with it 
And, you know, what are you supposed to do in that situation? Tell him to put some clothes on? That guy's going to cuss at you. Then he'll probably definitely throw some poop on you or something just for telling him to put his clothes on. And he's going to mess with you when you go in a cell. And he'll probably walk around butt naked out and, uh, went for his hour out or do something to you while his hour's out. You know, you can't say nothing to this guy. He's obviously a lunatic. Walking around there butterball naked and it's freezing in the hall. I'm like, what is going on here, man? You know? So I didn't say nothing. I just used the phone and went back to my, doing my business. You know? But just picture that, man. You're already in the hole. And you're walking past cells. You see some clothing lines and stuff. In one cell, you see a guy playing cards in one cell. One guy reading a Bible. Next cell, the guy's butterball naked. Walking around, doing laundry, stuff like that. Butterball naked, man. That stuff has scarred me, man. It's not the, you know, knowing that someone just got stabbed across the yard in another building or someone getting beat to a pulp. That stuff never really scared me, you know what I mean? I mean, it did, but it didn't scar me forever. The stuff that scarred me forever about the penitentiary was the absolute sexual depravity or depravity, however you might say it, man. The sexual and animalistic ways of man when they're away from women is absolutely atrocious, man. People really start to act like animals, and that stuff has scarred me for life. Like, this guy walking around butt naked, he might not have been doing anything sexual, but it is sexual because he's butt naked. And that's stuff that I, you know, I just will never forget. And, you know, another time in a hole, this guy tried hanging himself. You know, you hear a guy screaming, he got out for his hour out, and he says, uh, deputy, deputy, this was in Chesapeake City Jail too. Deputy, deputy, someone's trying to kill himself, someone's trying to kill himself. Banging on the door, stuff like that, and you're in the hole like, dang, man, you know, it's like watching a movie. And also, you know, I used to listen to all the drama going on with the gang members, you know, dude was, as they're walking past for chow or something, anything, uh, they'll scream in the door, we got you, we're gonna get you when you get out. We're gonna get you when you get out, so-and-so, so-and-so, and then... You know, you hear the dude in his cell screaming to back to him, you know, shut up, you know, whatever he's going to say. And then he goes quiet for like two hours. He's thinking like, God, I'm, I'm going to get got as soon as I leave this side pocket, man. I know, it. you know, that's how you can tell when someone's got a lot on their mind. They don't talk no more. They just are thinking, you know, and this guy talked all the time in the hole. So, you know, he was sitting in that cell sweating it. After hearing those other gang members tell him we're going to get you when you get out. Yeah, you know, there's many ways to read people. And someone that talks a lot, jokes a lot, if he happens to go quiet out of nowhere, he's got a lot on his mind. And also, I did a video on this about, uh, I can't remember what it was titled, but also I was in a hole in Deep Meadow State Penitentiary, and this... I will never forget it, man. This is like the worst news anyone could ever have besides a loved one passing away. This guy was in the hall, man. He laughing, joking me. We could see each other back and forth across the hallway. Uh, we laugh and joked all the time. We played chess by screaming out chess pieces being moved to certain squares, like on a grid. You know, we connected, okay? And this was the very first prison I was ever in. It was a receiving called Deep Meadows. So me and him were talking all the time, man. And this is the hole, and the guy has someone come to his window. It was a nurse, and the nurse told him something, and then he got really quiet. I said, well, yo, 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 and you know, I don't even remember his name either. I said, bro, what's up, what's up? And he goes, man, they just told me I'm HIV positive. And I'm like, damn. <sighs> Can you imagine that, man? You're sitting in the hole. And now you really know you're, you're dying in the hole, literally. You know what I mean? He's dying. He's got HIV. Who knows how long he's had it? You know? You could have had it for a long time. Might be full-blown AIDS in the next week. You could die. So it was absolutely insane to hear that, even though it wasn't my news. It was his news. But that really bummed me out. Like, dang, I need to go get tested myself. You know what I mean? That crazy stuff, man. When you when you see someone else go through something like that, man, it really feels like it happened to you. Especially when you're really close to that person. You can really feel their pain. Anyways, that's a few stories from the whole. I got a few others I'll probably save for another time. I gotta unlock the 
safe up there, man. I can't remember a lot of stuff, but it comes to me as I start to think about it. And uh, just remember, man, the whole you think you can do time in there and feel comfortable just being by yourself and relaxing and kicking it. Nah, you're going to be dealing with your own demons then. Okay? Silence will kill you. I'm telling you. Less than six months, you would realize I got to get back to general population. Without a doubt in my mind, I know for a fact, 90% of people that view this cannot handle years in the hole. Maybe higher of a percentage. you got to get out of there. You will go absolutely crazy. And I'll make another video exactly about how I went crazy in the hole a few times. And, you know. But this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the hole. There's a lot of things that go on in there that are absolutely horrifying. So until the next episode, y'all stay safe out there. Don't forget to check out my Patreon, man. Sign up. I got great content on there and great reward packages, man. Go check it out. The link is in the description of this video. Also, the death merch. Yeah, go get yourself a hoodie or a long sleeve t-shirt, whatever it is, on the Teespring links in the description of the video as well. And don't forget to add me up on all that good old social media, you know. Until the next time, man.